Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to crochet a striped moss stitch washcloth. So this is a relatively simple uh, pattern. This is going to be a corner-to-corner -corner moss stitch washcloth, and we're going to change it up by, um, you know, doing different numbers of rows of each color. And the first thing you're going to need is the written pattern from my blog, yayforyarn.com. You can find the link to that in the description box. I've got um, peaches and cream cotton yarn in what they call dark gray, even though it's not anywhere near being dark gray. It's more of a light gray. And I have some white. You're going to need a size H crochet hook or whatever size you need to get the correct gauge. But again, this is a washcloth, so precise gauge. Um, you know, if yours is a quarter inch bigger than mine, who cares? But if you're doing a whole bunch of them, you want to be consistent so that they're all the same size. You're going to need some scissors, yarn needle, or a blunt tapestry needle, and you're going to need a ruler to measure your gauge and your finished size. So I'm going to start with the dark gray that is very, very light. But anyway... I've got my crochet hook and I'm going to take the gray yarn and I'm going to start by chaining three. I'm going to work several stitches into this third chain from the hook. So I'm going to skip the first two and into this first chain from the hook, I'm going to work a single crochet. I'm going to chain one. I'm going to work another single crochet in that same stitch and a half double crochet all in that same stitch. So that is basically our first row. So we are establishing the corner. This is going to be kind of our right angle of our corner right here. And we're just going to pull on, I pulled that a little too hard, but pull on the yarn tail to kind of close up the little loop that is there. So you should be counting the two chains that we skipped that's going to count as one stitch. Then we should have a single crochet that counts as a second stitch. That chain one counts as our third stitch. The single crochet after it counts as our fourth stitch and then the half double crochet counts as our fifth stitch. So at this point you should have five stitches. So the chain two at the beginning of the row always counts as a stitch and every chain one space in each row counts as a stitch. So we're now going to chain two and turn. We're going to work a single crochet in the same stitch, the same stitch that the chain two is coming out of, like so. Then we're going to chain one, skip one single crochet, and this, is, this row is kind of hard to see what's a single crochet and what is a chain, but we're gonna skip this single crochet and we're gonna work a single crochet into the chain one space from the row below. So we have our chain two, we single crocheted in the same stitch, we chained one, skipped one, and single crocheted into that chain space in the middle of the row. We're gonna chain one, skip one again, and then we're gonna work into the top of this beginning chain space, which was the chain two that we skipped on the first row. We're gonna work a single crochet and a half double crochet into that space, the top of that space. So that is our second row. You should now have seven stitches. So for row three, row three is the row that we're gonna be repeating over and over and over and over and over again. So what we're gonna do is chain two and turn. This is very similar to the rows we've done this far. And we're gonna single crochet into the same stitch, chain one, skip the next single crochet and work a single crochet into the next chain one space from the row below. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space. And on, on following rows, you're gonna have a longer row than this. So you're gonna keep chaining one and skipping one single crochet into the next uh, chain one space. But we have done it twice and that's all we have room for in this row because we're gonna do that till we get to the last two stitches. So here's our last two stitches. So we're going to chain one, skip that single crochet, and then we're going to go into the top of that beginning chain space, and we're gonna work a single crochet 
and a half double crochet into that space. So we're gonna, I'm gonna show you this, this row one more time, and then I'm just gonna keep repeating it until it's time to change colors. So we're gonna chain two again and turn, single crochet into the same stitch, and then we're gonna do this again. Chain one, skip one, single crochet into the next chain space. We're going to keep repeating that till we have two stitches left in the row. So chain one, skip that single crochet, and work a single crochet in the next chain one space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain one space. Then we're going to chain one, skip one, and work a single crochet and a half double crochet into the top of the beginning chain space from the row below. So as you can see, this is kind of the beginning of our corner. If we were to stop right now, this side, the length of one side of our, our triangle, the one of the short sides, would be the width of our washcloth. And that is obviously way too small, but this is basically how this is going to be constructed. Here's our, our corner down here. We're going to work diagonal rows until our triangle is big enough, until one of the short sides is the width that we want our entire washcloth to be. We're going to do a little edging around it, but aside from the little edging anyway. And then we're going to work some different rows to make it kind of come back down to a point, and then we can work our edging all the way around. So I'm gonna keep repeating that third row until it's time to change colors. And you can vary, you know, the, the number of rows you do per stripe and, you know, what kind of stripe sequence you wanna do, but I'm just gonna show you the stripe sequence that I'm doing in case you want to replicate the exact same um, design. All right, so there is my first stripe um, where I'm gonna stop with my first color. I did a total, including um, starting down here, counting at the very corner, a total of 12 rows. And now I'm gonna switch to my white. So what I'm gonna do is I have already um, worked the half double crochet at the end of the last row, but I'm going to kind of unwork that last loop if you want to or if you don't you know feel comfortable doing that you can just undo the whole stitch and then just do part of a half double crochet by yarning over insert into the space that you're working into yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through all three like a regular half double crochet except I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three with my new color like so so basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna leave the tail hanging loose and we are going to carry the gray yarn up the side of the work by twisting it or laying it over top. See, now it's coming out down here. I wanna lay it over the top of my white so that when I start to work with my white, it's going to be held up against the edge. So I'm going to chain and then when I do my second chain, I'm gonna twist it back again so that it is carried up through the second part of that chain stitch. So now I'm going to leave the gray um, hanging because I'm going to carry it up this one side. And now I'm going to continue working more rows in this white. So I'm going to work the row that goes back to this direction so you can see how we carry the gray yarn up the edge of the next row as well. All right, so I've worked the single crochet into the top of the beginning chain space from the previous row. And as I work my half double crochet, I'm going to, again, um, before I finish pulling through the last three loops, I'm going to twist the gray yarn over top of the white. Then I'm going to use the white to pull through the last three loops. Then as I go into the next row, I'm going to twist it back for my first chain, twist it back again for the second chain, and then I can turn and keep working more rows. And this is going to help avoid um, having more tails to weave in because if we cut the yarn every time we did a stripe then we'd make a whole lot of tails to weave in and nobody likes to do that. I've never heard of anybody who just loves weaving in ends. 
So we're going to just continue to carry the gray yarn up the side of the work. And then when we finish with our white section, we want to stop with the white on this end so that we can just pick up the gray and continue working more stripes with the gray without having to, you know, cut the yarn and then start again with a new, um, new yarn tail to weave in and etc. So I'm going to keep working with my white, carrying it up the side of the work until I'm ready to change to the gray again. All right, so I've finished my white section and I've done all except the very last half double crochet in this row because we're gonna switch to gray in the last half double crochet. So I've worked my single crochet into the beginning chain space. I need another half double crochet in the beginning chain space. So I'm going to work my half double crochet until I'm to this point with three loops on the hook. Then instead of pulling through with the white, I'm going to twist the gray with the white and pull through the gray. And then again, I'm going to twist it again to do my first chain, twist it again to do my second chain to carry the white up the edge of the work now. And I'm just going to start working some more rows with the gray. And I will show you what it looks like when I am finished with this next stripe. And then we can change back to the white again. All right, so I have done my original 12 rows of gray. I did 10 rows of white and I did eight more rows of gray. And if I measure along this um, side of the triangle, either one, you can do this side or this side, they're gonna both be the same. I've got about 10 inches wide. So that is approximately the size I'm going for for the initial square. We're gonna go around it with a little edging, but approximately, 10 inches wide at the, at the moment. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do a single row of the white next. And what, we, what happens if we do a single row of either color is that if I were to crochet across the row with the white, then when I'm ready to switch back to gray, the gray yarn is going to still be attached over here. So instead of cutting the gray yarn and then reattaching it over here when we're ready to go back this way, then I'm just going to carry it and crochet over it across the row. And then on the next row following, then we're gonna do a little technique to totally encase the um, yarn that's crocheted over. And this is a little technique you can use if you want to do a single stripe um, and then instantly go back to the opposite color. So what I've done here so far is um, all I did was I pulled my white through the uh, last step or the, the three loops of the half double crochet. So now we're going to work the uh, same row that we've been working one more time. And so now that I've got it switched to white, I'm going to twist so that the gray is interlocked, do my first chain, and instead of twisting again and doing the second chain, we're just going to do the second chain because we want the yarn to be coming out at the base of our, of our chain, um, right at the top of the previous row. So if we were to twist it for the second chain, then the yarn would be coming out up here and then it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't be able to be worked into the, uh, the row as well. So we're gonna turn and work the same row as normal single crocheting in the same stitch, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain, and we're just going to be crocheting over this gray strand. And you just wanna make sure that as you do this, you're laying the gray strand directly over top of your stitches and not behind it or in front of it. We just kinda of want it centered as we are working it across. And when we get to the other end, um, you won't really be able to see the yarn very much, but on the next row, we're going to completely hide it and make sure that it is invisible. So I'm just going to finish this row. It's the same row we've been repeating, carrying the gray yarn all the way across. All right, so I've made it all the way across here and I'm going to twist the yarns again and pull my last loop through with the gray because we're gonna switch to the gray now. And now we are going to switch to repeating another row, a different row, 
because now we have to decrease to make this come to you know come to into a point to make a square. So again, we're going to twist together to carry the yarn up the edge, twisting on uh, both chains. And now we are going to let the white yarn fall, hang off the side, and we're going to start working um, the decrease row, which is what makes it smaller so that it becomes a square. So I've got my chain two, I've turned, I'm going to skip the next stitch and single crochet in that first chain space. Now, the thing that we're going to do to hide the tail, the yarn, the gray yarn that we carried on the previous row, is as you can see right here, here is the single crochet below, from the row below the white one, and you can see that gray yarn that we carried on top of that. As I insert into my chain space, I'm also going to come down here and insert under the carried strand of yarn. So I'm going to single crochet into that chain space, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space, always making sure that you're inserting under that strand of carried yarn. And what that does is that encases the strand all the way through so that you can't see it. So all of the places where we skipped a stitch on the last row and there's a gap there, we are picking it up and crocheting over it as we work this next row that we're doing right now. So I'm again going to chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space all the way across until we get to the last two stitches. All right, so we are getting down close to the end of the row and I'm going to work my last single crochet there. I have stopped when there are two stitches left in the row. So there's the chain space from the previous row and there's one single crochet from the previous row. And so we are going to stop when we get to that point. And then we're going to skip that single crochet. We're not chaining one and skipping one, we're just gonna skip one and half double crochet into the top of the beginning chain space from the previous row. So that is going to kind of turn that edge and make it go straight across the top. So now I'm going to keep repeating that row until we have seven stitches left in a row. So this is gonna keep decreasing down and decreasing down until we have seven stitches left in our row and then there's going to be a different row that we work after that. So to keep repeating, we're gonna chain two and turn. We're gonna skip the next stitch and single crochet into the next chain space. We don't have to worry about picking up a carried strand of yarn because there isn't one on any of the rest of these rows. So chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space all the way across until we get to the last two stitches. And we are almost there. There we go, we've got two stitches left. Now we're gonna half double crochet. We're gonna skip the next stitch and half double crochet into the beginning chain space from the row below. And when we do that, we want to make sure that we twist. After we pull up that loop, we wanna twist the yarn and finish that half double crochet um, with that, that white yarn twisted in the yarn we just pulled through. So we're going to keep repeating that row with um, you know twisting the yarns together at the edge to keep carrying the unused color up the edge. And I'm going to do um, another six rows of the gray because I did eight rows down here. So I'm gonna do another total of eight rows. I've already got two, but I'm gonna do a total of eight. Then I'm gonna do um, switch to the white and do 10 rows in white. And then I'm gonna show you what, I, what I'm gonna do when I um, switch to the gray because when we get down to the other corner of the gray, I'm still gonna do a total of 12 rows, but some of those last few rows are gonna be a little bit different. So I'm just gonna keep repeating this row that I just did, the decrease row, until, um, you know, with my stripe pattern, until I have seven stitches left in my row. All right, so I am down to seven stitches in my row. As you can see, I have mirrored the stripe pattern that I had on the other side. And I have continued to carry the white along the edge up here because we're going to use it in our edging. So I don't wanna have to cut it and then start a new tail when I could just carry it along the edge and save two extra tails to weave in. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to work a couple um, more rows that we're going to need to make this into a little corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work chain two and turn. We're going to skip the first stitch, single crochet in the next chain space, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space, skip one and half double into the beginning chain space from the row below. Now that is very, very similar um, to what we have been doing for all the rows that we've been repeating. I am again going to twist the yarn to carry it up to the corner because we want to carry it all the way to the corner. We're going to again chain two and as I do that I'm of course going to twist the yarn to carry it. Then I'm going to skip the first stitch, single crochet into the center chain space, which there's only one there. And then we're going to skip another one and half double crochet into the beginning chain space. And then for our final row, we're going to chain one and turn and single crochet two together. Now to do this, we're going to insert into the single crochet, pull up a loop and insert into the beginning chain space and pull up a loop. And then we're going to pull through all the loops on our hook. So that is our last row for the, to, you know, to make it a square. There is our square. It's a little bit wiggly around um, the edges that we carried yarn through, but we're going to fix that with our edging and we will not be able to see that extra carried strand anymore. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to drop that white yarn, ignore it, and just let it hang there for a while, and we're gonna work in edging. So to do that, we're gonna chain one. We're not gonna turn, though. We are going to work two single crochets into this corner of the washcloth, like so. And then we're going to, again, making sure that the white tail is out of the way, single crochet evenly across the edge of our washcloth. So as you can see, I am just single crocheting evenly across, making sure that my single crochet does not stretch or shrink up the edge of the washcloth. And it is pretty well covering the um, carried yarn as long as you make sure that you are you know, crocheting evenly across. So I just made it to the end of my gray section. I'm going to keep going till I get to this corner. So I have made it all the way across to my corner. So some of the rows have a half double crochet on the edge and some of them have a chain two instead of a half double crochet, the beginning chain space. So in each one that ended with a half double crochet, I put one single crochet. In each one that ended with a chain two, um, along the edge, I put a single crochet in each of those two chains. So you just basically want it to be even and neat and lay flat. So I've made it to the corner and what we're going to do in the corner is we're going to work three single crochets into the corner. And if you come out with a slightly different number of single crochets than me, then that's okay as long as everything is even. But I had um, 41 single crochets along this side, and you just want to try to make sure that each side has as close to the exact same number of single crochets that go along the side. So I'm gonna work 41 single crochet across the next side, three single crochet in the corner, another 41 single crochet across the next side, three single crochet in the corner, and then another 41 single crochet along this side, and then we're gonna join it down here where we started. All right, so here's what it looks like right now. I've got one row of single crochet around the edge, and as I went around my washcloth, I did crochet over the, um, the original tails, the yarn tails, there were only two of them because we carried the yarn up the side so we didn't have to weave in any extra tails. So now what we're gonna do is switch to the white, but we're also going to join the end of this round. So I'm going to slip stitch in that beginning chain one space. And then as you can see, we did a chain one 
and then two single crochets in the same space. So that second one is the one in the center. I'm going to insert my hook into that and slip stitch into it with the white. So I'm pulling up white instead of the, you know, the gray that we had just been working with. So now I'm basically going to repeat the whole thing again. I'm going to chain one and put two more single crochets in that same space. And then I am going to just single crochet in each stitch across until I get to the next corner. And as I approach the corner, I'm going to look for the group of three single crochets that went into one stitch that is right here. So I've got one more regular one. Then here's our group of three single crochets in our corner. We're going to work into the first one with a regular single crochet. Then in the second one, we're going to put three single crochets to turn the corner. And then one single crochet in the third one and just keep single crocheting across the row. So what we're going to do is just like we did before, I started down here with my corner, single crocheted across the one side, three single crochet in the corner, I'm going to single crochet across this side, three single crochets in the corner, and when I say that I mean the center stitch in the um, group of three single crochets from the previous round, down to the next corner, three single crochets, and then across to the original corner that we started in, and then we're going to join and switch back to the gray. So here we are at the corner again. I'm going to slip stitch into the beginning chain space from the beginning of the round. And then I'm going to insert into the next stitch. And instead of pulling through a slip stitch with the white, I'm going to pull it through with the gray, which has been hanging here on this corner while we did the white round of trim. So now I'm going to cut the white yarn because that's all we're going to need it for. That's the last that we're going to use. And now I'm going to crochet over it. And again with the gray, I'm going to work again the exact same round. Chain one. And then put two single crochet in the exact same space for a total of three. Because we're counting that chain one as a stitch. And then again, I'm going to single crochet across this edge. Put three single crochet in the center single crochet of the previous um, set of three that went into that corner and down the next side three in the corner all the way down the next side three in the corner all the way down to where we started all right so i've made it all the way back around but instead of slip stitching i am going to join the end of the round with a little bit different method that's going to leave a perfectly seamless uh, edge with no um, no visible starting and stopping point. So I'm going to cut the yarn leaving about a six inch tail and I've got my yarn needle ready. I'm going to take the crochet hook and pull on the current loop until it comes apart and the end of the yarn comes out. I'm going to take the end of that yarn and thread it into my yarn needle and what we're going to do is recreate the top edge of a single crochet. So to do this I'm going to insert my needle from front to back through the stitches of that first single crochet as if you were inserting your crochet hook into it and pull through and then I'm going to bring my your needle back and insert in the same place where that tail originally came from and that recreates the edge of the single crochet so that it is totally seamless totally invisible and you would never be able to tell where you stopped and started so I'm just going to turn this over and weave the tail into the gray round of my edging. So ta-da, our washcloth is now finished and it has um, some very large stripes and a smaller um, center stripe of a single row. And then we finish it off with a striped edging. So if you want to get the free pattern for this project, you can go to my blog, yayforyarn.com, and you can also um, click the link in the description box. It will take you to the same place, and the free pattern is available there.
So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you make this project, let me know how it turns out for you in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.